NVIDIA CPU GPU combo is gonna take a little bit to come out. More Linux handhelds and what is Intel doing? What is this thing? Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Wednesday, May 14th, 2025. And we're gonna start off today talking about the N1 and N1X chips that we're expecting to get debuted at Computex. These are gonna be the partnership between MediaTek and NVIDIA to create NVIDIA's own new setup for laptops and desktops where they don't have to rely on AMD and Intel to come out with their CPUs in order for NVIDIA to get the full slice of the compute pie. But the reports are that while we are expecting to see NVIDIA talk about these things at Computex, which is taking place in about a week, and actually in a week, they won't get shipped in meaningful volumes until the second half of 2026 or over a year from now. This is a DigiTimes report coming out and saying that there are significant issues that are plaguing NVIDIA when it comes to the performance of these, saying that it's worse than some ARM-based PC chips, whether that's the Snapdragon or otherwise. Additionally, that there's unresolved integration issues with endpoint devices, and that there's just a bunch of issues that NVIDIA is encountering with actually getting these things working in the way that they want. And so they're not gonna be hitting the market as soon as people were expecting them to. But supposedly Dell, HP, Lenovo, Asus are all working with NVIDIA to come out with not just laptop iterations of these chips, the N1 and the N1X, but also potentially in desktops, probably in some sort of office PC or mini form factor is likely to happen. I would be so happy if we could get a redux of the NVIDIA Shield portable. That would be fantastic. If this ran Windows or SteamOS, I would... I mean, we kind of already have this. There's a million of these now. I think I'm just nostalgic. I think that's that's what's happening right here. But I can tell you that if I had one of those, a new Shield Portable, I would definitely use it with today's video sponsor. I've got a secret. Come here, let me tell you. I like being comfy. There. I said it. So when I tell you that the Lotus Recliner from today's sponsor, FlexiSpot, is super comfy, I mean it. Now, this might not look like the run-of-the-mill, rundown recliner your dad's been sitting in every evening for your entire life. The Lotus recliner features a comfy 20.9-inch seat with a 9.8-inch low-profile armrest setup. Thanks to the seat design, you can sit normal style, crossy style, and even buddy style. This one is better with pets, but we only have co-workers here. They can send it. This is also the perfect chair to live out your Bond villain dreams. The FlexiSpot Lotus has a super smooth swivel and rocking mechanism, so you can turn to face your mortal enemies with elegance and comfort. Now, as the name suggests, this chair does indeed recline, and oh boy, is this a comfy recline. This thing glides back so effortlessly. You'll be napping before you're even fully supplied. The version we have here in the office is the electric option in PU brown leather and USB-C charging. If you want something without the bells and whistles, you can grab this same chair with manual adjustments. Either way, grab yourself a comfy chair filled with features today. Check it out by the link in the description below. And also, don't miss out on FlexiSpot's brand day sale on May 25th. You can use my code LOTUS30 to get $30 off plus free shipping. Thanks to FlexiSpot for sponsoring today's video. You can also use the Zotac Zone with the FlexiSpot recliner because that's a new handheld that's supposed to be dropping at some point. Point, the second iteration of it, rather, because the Zone 1 got showed off at last Computex, and now the Zone 2 got showed off at this previous CES in January, with a prototype version again making its appearance at Computex next week, but Zotac confirming that this handheld will not be running Windows at all. Instead, it will be running Manjaro Linux. And that's in addition to it getting a new processor of the HX370, which should help increase its performance. Now, it might not necessarily get all of the benefits of potentially running SteamOS and all of that. However, one of the things it could benefit from is Valve's work on the Proton compatibility layer so that there is more game support on Linux in general, but also at the same time, Valve did put out a new guidance on SteamOS compatibility, especially since the Lenovo Legion Go S, which is gonna be running SteamOS, is gonna be released shortly. So they can't say that Steam Deck verified because it's not using the same hardware as the Steam Deck. So they have to have this whole compatibility listing that you'll now be able to see. They'll have it separate from the Steam Deck that'll have its own thing. And then SteamOS compatibility will be a secondary setup just so 
you can know how games play on the go mobile all that kind of stuff, which I hear Reese likes to do. He's got a Legion Go, not the S, just the regular one, but uh, he can uh, help save you some money with some of the tech deals. Yo, welcome back to UFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet. Hope you guys are doing well this Wednesday and I'll jump straight into the deals for you. Starting off today, we have the Govi Smart LED Light Bars for only $39.99, making them $20 off. I actually have a couple here, right in the background. You can't really see them with the lights that are usually blaring into my eyes, but, uh, you know, they just add a little something something when I'm not like staring into the sun. But then next up, we have the Epo Maker HE68, which is a 65% wired, full effect, hot swappable gasket mount mechanical keyboard, which I think looks absolutely gorgeous. And it's going for only $47.99, making it $32 off. And then lastly, today we have the Logitech C930E, which is a 1080p webcam, which you can grab for only $54.99 with the code Logitech5, making it $75 off the total price. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below but until next time i'm gonna hand you off back to brett for the rest of your hot news cheers well reese i'm gonna need to save up a bit of scratch for this next news article because this is just something i want to celebrate as a father of a child with significant special needs anytime there's an advancement in accessibility for uh people i, I want to talk about it and that's kia unveiling a brand new ev their pv5 wav wave whatever they're calling it this is going to be their platform beyond vehicle setup which is going to be a mid-size van that is fully electric but have wheelchair access. It'll have a ramp that comes out of the side that can support, I think it said over 600 pounds, making so that you could easily get people in and out, especially if you're in a handicapped spot. As a father of somebody who uses a wheelchair on the regular, having an EV that can manage this, just, it's a good thing to come out. However, it's currently only rolling out in the UK for roughly 33,000 pounds, around $45,000. It's launching in Europe and Korea later, but in the UK currently, and its range isn't that great. You can either get it with 179 miles or 249 miles, but if you're just kind of uh, going to and from doctor's appointments or just going around in a local city, that should be mostly fine for charging at home. I just, I want to celebrate this. Will I? pick one up I don't I don't know I, I mean we already purchased our minivan in South Africa so it's not gonna be this because that's not available but uh if it does ever pop up down there uh you can bet your bottom dollar I'm gonna be interested in it at least so shout out Kia thank you for making an accessible van I just I appreciate it it's good stuff. And people want Intel to be good stuff when it comes to the GPU side of things and to show that they're still committed. We are now finding more details from data mining that indicate that XE4, also known as Druid, the GPU development on that is still moving forward. It's still happening. This is gonna be coming out after Celestial, which hasn't even released yet. So there's just at least some sort of software development going on for Druid. It's just a nice little confirmation that Intel is putting effort into this. And I've just is curious what is uh getting them to put the effort into this next thing which is according to video cards who has a direct source who is confirming with them that one of the board partners with intel is working on a dual gpu intel arc b 580 but not just that it's the b580 that has 24 gigabytes of vram so it's actually going to be a dual gpu setup with 48 gigabytes of memory which would be huge obviously would be big for people who are using them for large language models all of that stuff but obviously one of the issues that you encounter here is just one of the reasons why dual gpus kind of died way back when software support is just a huge problem when it comes to actually making these feasible it could potentially be that intel has that figured out whether that's just for you know uh llm applications ai stuff where they can utilize and leverage both gpus i don't think that this is potentially going to be all that great when it comes to gaming it's essentially going to be a professional level card but with that option of uh intel not necessarily making a bigger gpu but just slapping two together. I'm really curious, I'm really curious. Reports are coming out from video cards that we should see this announced at Computex. However, there is a little weirdness around that timeline, especially with NDAs and all of that kind of stuff. But uh, reports are that this is in the works, 48 gigabytes, double GPU, from Intel, they're whipping up something. Intel's got some sauce going on right now with what, however they're playing the GPU game. This is this is the scrappy innovation you want to see, even if it's not necessarily something that's going to benefit all gamers. It shows that Intel has um, at least creativity 
and uh, a, a chance to try something new, which uh, I, I applaud at the very least, even if it's not gonna go into my system. But let me know what you think of it down below in the comments while I read what you had to say in yesterday's episode of Hot News. We got Semi Big Brain Gamer saying, might as well buy a 7800 XT with $450. Unless the 9060 XT beats it. Doubtful, but just saying. And then little Nikki Scarfo saying, I'll be replacing thumbsticks in my friend's PS5 controller. Crazy how many controllers I've gone through in my life. I have had a lot of controllers, but as far as like wear and tear, I don't think I've really had too many die on me. This issue with my R1 trigger in Expedition 33 is definitely a first where I've used, I've worn it out from just constant button mashing, but I like I've never destroyed a controller in a fit of rage or anything like that. I had stick drift happened to the Joy-Cons on my kid's Switch, but as far as like my DualShock 4 on my PlayStation 5, that held up until I got a, a PS4 Pro, and then that controller held up until I got a DualSense, and then since the PS5 has launched, that I don't know. I think I've I've gone a little overboard with collecting some of the the limited edition controllers. I've been I've been thoroughly enjoying that. So I have uh, various different ones that I guess I cycle through, making it so that I'm not putting as much. I'm not just using one. I guess is the I'm, I'm living a life of controller luxury. I think is uh, the the key point that's coming out of this conversation from my side. But I'm glad you're you're fixing your friend's controller. That's nice. And then Danny Rio saying didn't get to comment when it was in the video because honestly I forgot. But I snatched the. Ryzen 7 5800 XT CPU deal thanks to this channel. Thanks so much. Now I just need to find a deal for a secondhand GPU and I'm golden. Congrats. I mean, I, we work with uh, channel sponsor Jawa when it comes to secondhand uh, GPU stuff. So you check that out. I'm glad that you uh, you got a CPU deal. I'm glad Reese is saving you money. Thanks for putting that in the comments. I'm glad to see that it's helping. And then we got K -K -K Cornel saying that 5090 put a gold chain on it and use it as bling. I don't know if you've picked up an Astro. Probably not. They're not uh, easily accessible, but uh, it, it, Asus sent us one, right? That thing's like seven pounds. It is heavy. And if you're wearing that around your neck, congrats to you. You've got a tree stump just attached to your shoulders and cranium. That would be ridiculous to wear as a necklace. Not a bad idea, but ridiculous. And then Yanfi saying, you okay, man? You're almost tearing up. I'm genuinely worried. I, I'm not. I'm not at all. I think you're, you might be misreading my uh, my cues. I'm not, I have not been moved to tears in hot news recently. So maybe I just look like this. And uh, when I'm really sad, you'll see it, I think. I don't know. I, I, I don't have a problem letting my emotions show, but I, I'm not on the verge of tears. Uh, my life is actually pretty fa fantastic right now. I'm not in a stressful season personally. Uh, things have been going fantastic with my my son's uh medication and all of the things that we've had to do for his health uh my other three kids are doing fantastically I, we're just like we're in a very good spot right now the business is doing well uft tech is uh thriving and jiving and growing and um you know we're adding team members and i don't know i like i'm i'm enjoying life right now so if i look like i'm on the verge of tears at the very most Tears of joy. And I'm going to joyfully exit this episode of Hot News. I'll be back here for more of the hottest tech news tomorrow. See you then.